basically, but this is your prep of your inflation device. So you're gonna get it as air-free as possible, leave about 15 cc's or 14, somewhere around that, of your fluid mixture, your contrast saline mixture, 50-50, 60-40, 60 being the flush, 40 being the contrast, okay? Um, and we're gonna prep our balloon. This is our monorail. This is what we're gonna use for our procedure. Now, for practical purposes, you are gonna have to prep your over the wire as well, and you're gonna have to obviously know the difference, okay? Because I'm going to ask you, I'm gonna say, okay, go ahead and prep your monorail, or I'm gonna say, go ahead and prep your over the wire first. That way I know you know which one is which, okay? Now, this is what I am gonna say about prepping the monorail though. And this is what I want you to tell me. So what I really want you to do back here is just prep your balloon, okay? When we get to the table to start our procedure, that's when you're gonna do your flush. Now I demonstrated last week how to do it over here, but it's just too much, that catheter's too springy. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you a better technique and I'm actually gonna take a little extra time and demonstrate something else with you a little bit later, okay? I showed the last group, but we have four cath in there. So it is a little different way to prep. Something that's going to probably benefit you in the future, okay? Um, anyway, we're gonna do our prep with our negative burp. This is a balloon. Negative. And this is how fast it should be done. Ready to go to my table, okay? Sorry, this is not anything. I'm just, had forgotten to refill this bottle. Yeah, I know you're scrubbed, but shut that red valve for me. We wouldn't do this in the real world. Thank you. Do you want me to close this one as well? Is it leaking? Well, no, you haven't. No, then I don't. I just wanted that closed because it's leaking. Okay, so that's right. Okay, so we're saying we've already got access. So the rest of the equipment that we want to go ahead and have ready is, of course, our wire. Remember how we're going to flush our wire is just going to be flushing the hoop. This is the 014 short wire. We're gonna use a short wire with our monorail balloon. I can go ahead and have this back here ready to go. Our guide catheter, we're gonna flush it. Okay. And have it ready to go. Okay. We're gonna have our accessory equipment. Tui wire insertion tool, torque device, okay? We're gonna bring all that over here and I'm gonna show you how to set that up. We're gonna need an o, our 035 J wire to get our guide catheter in. So of course I would have flushed the hoop on that. I'm gonna have that over here ready to go. I'm gonna try to grab everything from over here and then let you guys come over and I'll show you how to set all this up, okay? I'm just gonna set it here for now. That's not where the final place it's gonna be. Um, one more thing we're going to need, of course, is our nitroglycerin. However, the doctor wants it. I have to get me a little more night. Oh, my little label now is not going to stick. I have to just pretend. Okay, so either in my 10 cc syringe or my 3 cc syringes. I don't care how you give it to me for the practical. Okay, as long as you give me and it's labeled properly. So here's my threes. I'll get a few more lidocaine, I'm sorry, nitro stickers. Yeah, here we go. We have a few here so we could go ahead and label these. So they're ready to go. And you can practice both ways, however you wanna do it. I am gonna be not a picky doctor on this part. So again, I just want you to make sure that you have nitroglycerin prepared and over here ready for me. Now, I'm not gonna ask for verapamil or adenosine. 
we'll talk about that and really I want you really to know more about that obviously you know I do want you guys to be able to tell me if if we need and I'll even try to demonstrate like this remember if we need what is the the kind of medication we're going to use if we need to vasodilate our capillary bed that's our adenosine and our, or our verapamil, depending on which one the doctor prefers. And they'll tell you that, okay? I'm gonna also have wet four by fours, just like if I was doing a diagnostic procedure. I'm gonna have some dry, I'm gonna have some wet for me. Some wet for the doctor. I like, I don't know where my big syringe went but I'm gonna have my doctor of flush syringe. I am going to grab a large syringe here because I don't wanna have, I like to have my, uh, my flush syringe as a 30. That may be a different preference for you, but some kind of flush syringe, okay? So come on around here because I'm gonna um, demonstrate how we're gonna set everything up and how I want you to have it all set up ready to go for the procedure. So. You're gonna put, go ahead and put your two week on your extension tubing. A lot of people forget this, okay? I want you to go ahead and put this on. I just wanna show you something really quick while we're here. And of course, you know, primarily for Nicole, but some doctors will actually have you put a stopcock in between here, okay? And then put on this just gives them an extra port here where they can draw straight from the catheter instead of having to come all the way back here from this port and draw all through this tubing when they wanna draw an ACT. Or if they wanna deliver the nitroglycerin, then they can give it here instead of having to come all the way down here to this open port. Um, you may see some people, if they use a three port manifold, that actually, instead of doing this, they may put a stopcock here so that they have a place where they could deliver medication. Otherwise, you have to actually unhook, deliver medication, and then rehook, and that can be a pain. For our procedure, if you want to put the stopcock on, you can, but I, that's not mandatory. Again, this was primarily so that you know that you could run across doctors that that's what they want you to do, okay? So for our purposes, we can just connect it to the tubing. You want to have your wire insertion tool up here for the doctor. The doctor is going to be using this, okay? Your torque device, you don't want to have this up here because they're not the ones that's going to put the torque device on. You want to have it back here somewhere for you because you're the one that's going to be putting the torque device on, okay? Now, once we get ready to start the procedure, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're first gonna get our guide catheter in. We're gonna do it just like we did with our diagnostic, okay? So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. And if you go ahead and unwrap that and just hand me that, I can go ahead and take it. Okay, the one thing I do want you to understand is that this is, since it is a bigger lumen, it's also six French as opposed to maybe the four or the five French. You are gonna get it more bleeding out of here. So as soon as we're in, we're gonna be taking this wire out very quickly and connecting, okay? We are probably gonna connect. This can be some of the hardest part because you are gonna have to really listen to the doctor and communicate with the doctor. Some doctors are gonna want you to flush forward some are gonna want you to draw back first. It, it, it depends on their technique. The biggest thing is that whatever we do, we get this air free, okay? And of course, you let the doctor just kind of tell you what, if they're not communicating with you, ask them. You want me to flush forward? You want me to draw back? Because you may not see if their two weeks open or closed. And if you start sucking back and their two weeks open, you're just gonna start sucking a bunch of air. If it's closed, then you'll suck back from the catheter from the patient, okay? 
But if you go forward and there's a bunch of air in here, it can cause a problem. So when you go forward, what they're supposed to do is open so that it can, that air can be pushed out and then close while you're flushing and then you flush into the patient. So this is a little complicated. I'm gonna direct you through it, okay? As long as you can listen to my directions and do what I'm directing you to do, you're gonna be fine, okay? But let's go in and get our catheter in first. So just come, yep. Okay, so we're going in. Perfect. She's got the wire leading. All right, wire is going to the um, carotid, but we're gonna, as this wire's been doing that all day to me, we're gonna say it's at the valve, not going out the carotid. And the catheter's not, so she's pinning without my direction, which is wonderful. Now we're gonna say that the catheter is at the valve where we want it to be. This is just like our diagnostic procedure, getting that in. And I do suggest that, yeah, you get it out of the way, either tuck it under your towel, put it in your bowl, get it on your back table. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close and I'm gonna have you gently flush towards me. And we're gonna do a fluid to fluid connection stop. We're connected. So now what I'm gonna have you do is go ahead and draw back. Make sure I'm not in an air bubble. Okay, and don't do anything yet. You'll see that there's a pocket of air right here. Mm -hmm. So I wanna get that air out. So what I'm gonna do is open and have her flush. If I can hold it right, I'm trying to, so y'all can see it flush forward quickly, flush forward. Okay, stop. I think I saw some air go forward, so now I want you to draw back again. Yep. All right, clear. Uh, I see a bubble right there. So go ahead and get that air out of the syringe. You can turn, yep. Hopefully we wouldn't have quite as much air. Because this mannequin doesn't have the pressure like our blood has, we get more air with this situation. All right, so we got now, we look good, no air. I have no air here. I'm just gonna do one more time to make sure. Go ahead and flush forward. While I, she's flushing, I'm gonna close. Keep flushing forward. And good, flush, flush. Or aspirate, flush, flush, turn the pressure. Great, perfect, she did that exactly right. Okay, so now you're gonna get contrast in your syringe. Oh. So contrast from there. We haven't done this in a little while because we did this at the end of last semester. I didn't have you guys drawing up any contrast How in the much? midterm. Before so you're gonna fill your syringe, yep. Okay, and what should you do? What do you see right there? Good, always wanna make sure you make those bubbles go up to the hub, all right, good. So we're ready to now start doing test shots, all right? What I'm gonna do with my senior students is probably I'm gonna do a little combo. I'm gonna have you guys doing some movement and some panning. But for you guys, I'm just kind of demonstrating. So I'm gonna be the one, I'll, I'll put us in position, okay? Um, so say we're in, the doctor wants to do, um, LAO cranial, okay? And so what we're gonna do is maybe take a couple shots with the contrast to make sure that we see the vessel, we see the lesion. We see which view is the best to see the lesion and be able to do our procedure. Okay, so say I don't, I'm not, don't want to lean on this, so I'm actually going to go over, and of course we do a little bit of panning to, and I'm going to get this this battery. I'm a little frustrated because he didn't leave me a battery charger, seven hundred fifty dollars I paid for this, and I have no battery charger told me it was gonna charge, let me just verify because I'm, told me it would charge through the TV and it's not charging. So now I need to get a plug-in adapter so that I can get the battery charged. But we will have it by next week. I think I actually have one at home. Okay, needless to say, we take some pictures with our contrast. Always make sure you turn back to pressure. Okay. 
unless we're doing the injections, okay? We're pretending we did our injections. So, so after we get contrast, make sure we turn back to pressure. Yes, and actually while you're getting contrast, you, you wanna be, be on pressure. pressure. Only time you're gonna come off pressure is if we do injections. We do the injection, we turn back to pressure, we draw more contrast. At, while we're doing our intervention, we're always gonna have contrast in our syringe, ready to go for the doctor to have a test shot or a picture, okay? Kind of like we did with our, diagno our, our diagnostic procedure when we were doing the angiograms of the coronaries, okay? All right, so now it's time I'm ready to put my um, 014 wire in. So you're gonna just put this down and you're gonna get your 014. While she's getting the 014, I'm gonna get my wire insertion tool and go ahead and put it in. So this will be something that I am doing, but if you're practicing and you're the doctor, you're practicing together, this is something you have to do. So you just open the wire insertion tool in like that and then close it just so it's not leaking so much. You will get a little bit of leaking there, but not here. That's the back end of the wire. So you actually want to push that forward and watch it's going to come out right here so you don't want to ding it up. Keep pushing up. You don't grab the tip and ding the tip up. You want to grab, push it in as far as you can and then grab way back here very gently to pull it out. Great. Okay, so now she's going to give it to me. And I'll just let you know that some doctors will take either the wire insertion tool if they haven't already put it in, or they may ask you for um, the needle. This is, a, I don't really like this, but they'll actually take the needle and kind of like curling a ribbon, they'll take and make a little bend on it. Now some wires actually have a tool that you can do that with, and so they might want that tool, um, whatever they want, um, either they will get for themselves or they will ask you to get it for them so that they might can make a little bend. Whatever they do, once it's time to put it in, then they're just going to insert it. And all your job really is to just make sure that wire doesn't get contaminated. Okay? Now, once it comes out, I do want the torque device. Now, not every doctor wants the torque device. I usually wait until they ask me for it unless I know this doctor uses it every single time. I'm going to be the doctor that uses it every single time because I want you to put it on. Good. If it didn't go on, it might mean that it wasn't loose enough and you just unscrew it a little bit and then put it on. Okay? All right. So she's just, just pass it on down to me. That's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my wire out a little bit. We'll be able to see this once we get the camera going and I'm gonna tighten it where I want it on the wire, okay? So you don't have to worry about tightening. Okay. Just gonna put it on there for me. Okay, then I'm just gonna use it to twist and turn and try to snake down the vessel and get the wire as far past the lesion as I can or as I want it to be. Then what I'm gonna do is just take it off. This is the big thing, we're past the lesion. We don't wanna pull back on that wire. So I'm gonna just kind of push it to here and make sure I've got a hold. You're just gonna pull it off very carefully. Then before we can put any device in, we have to take the wire insertion out. Kind of think of like the needle. We can't put the sheath in if the needle is on there, right? So kind of the same thing. I have to be very careful and I'll just kind of walk it out. Then I'm gonna go and tighten my wire back, my, um, Tui back on it, hold my wire, and just kind of push it to you. You're gonna pull it off, reach back and wipe your wire. Very gently, beautiful. And put those on your back table. Sometimes I'll throw them in my bowl, my, my flush bowl, sometimes I'll throw them back there. We shouldn't need them again unless this wire doesn't work or we have to change the guide. or So you don't wanna lose them. So you wanna put them somewhere where you can get to them again, okay? Very good. Now, it's balloon time. Doctor may ask you for pictures. This is the thing you gotta remember, is that at any time they may ask you to pick this manifold, give them a test shot. So you have to be able to work both things, okay? I'm gonna let you stand back for just a second because I wanna demonstrate. Now, I would have also gotten rid of these out of my way. I would have thrown them in the garbage, but we saved them, so for practical, just kind of put them to the back so that I have a nice working area, okay? Now, I also didn't, 
but you can use this flush tool and can have that ready for yourself as well. So springy. So what I do is I use the inflation device kind of as an anchor, okay? And so this is why I was telling you, I've taught you how to flush it on the back table, but it's really the best practice. Just wait until you're about to load it on the wire, okay? What you can do is exactly what I'm gonna demonstrate, okay? So we've got it ready. It's a balloon. We've done all our negatives. We've prepped our balloon. I'm gonna just take it out and kind of make a horseshoe. I'm gonna pull out my stylet. I'm gonna give it a quick flush. And I'm gonna load it on my balloon, okay? Which I'm gonna let you do, okay? You gotta be careful, don't pull on the wire. Now, sometimes you, if you're really good, you can do it in the air. If you can't, what you can do is, ooh, yeah, that, sorry. So that has a little bend, so it's a little challenge. So she did great, but can I show you something else? Mm -hmm. Just in case you're having any issues with it, what you can do is hold the wire against your finger like that and kind of come in. And we'll see if I can do it. There we go. And load it on like that. Not everybody is going to be able to even see it and do this in the air, okay? So like I said, this is what you need to start practicing. Practice being able to get this on. Yeah, they showed me that trick in clinic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna just show this real quick okay. and then I'll let you do it. So what you're gonna do is advance the balloon to the doctor. Okay, once, and now I'll switch to the doctor. Once I get here, then I'll take it from you. But what I need you to do is to help me control this wire by pinning it until I get all this balloon in to that point up here where I can grab the wire. You'll see that in just a minute. I'm gonna let you do it though, but I wanted to kind of talk about it first. At that point where I grab the wire, all you're really gonna be responsible for is making sure this comes along with it, okay? So let's try that. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. You've already loaded it, so I won't make you do it again. <laughs> You did a great job, okay? So hold closer there, great, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, and the best, I like to use this hand underneath and pin it, yep, like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm gonna open the TUI and start advancing the, cap, the uh, balloon. At this point, see how I'm going in and see how now there's a separation. So I, as the doctor, can grab the wire and pin it myself. Now you don't have to worry about it anymore. What you need to just worry about is grab that inflation device, yep. Make sure nothing gets caught down there. Perfect, nice. And just come along with me. That's all you gotta do. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure it exits. All right, we are outside of the um, guide catheter. And then I'm gonna tighten it down some just to keep the blood leaking. If that gets tightened too tight, you can crimp that balloon and then you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna bend it. So when you guys are practicing, don't wrench on down on it. Just close it enough where it's not really leaking, okay? Now, you wanna make sure that you have a little bit of slack here, okay? At this point, the doctor may ask for a test. So you've got to lay this down, pick this up. Okay, so I want you to give me a little test shot. That's gonna be a couple cc's. That's good, turn back to pressure, get more contrast. What we're doing is we're making sure we're seeing that that balloon is in the lesion area where we want. That way the doctor can make adjustments if they want to, okay? Now, I like where we are, so we're gonna get ready to go and inflate. So now what you're gonna do when you inflate, you always wanna have the butt up, and you're going to go to neutral if you're not already in that neutral position. Okay, I have a big belly, I'm sorry. All right, then you're gonna start inflating. 
All right, I want you to go to six atmospheres. You can just kind of tilt so she can see, and you can come on over and, as you're recording. Okay, and so this is a really small balloon, but it is inflating, okay? All right, depending on what the doctor wants, the doctor may look and say, if it's not expanding as well as I want, go on up to eight atmospheres. Remember, gotta be kind of gentle with that. If you go too fast, you're gonna go past eight. So you need to be a little gentle. All right, let's go to 10. So someone, hopefully the recorder has started a timer as well for us. Yeah, I popped it. It ruptured. Oh. Dang it, it wasn't your fault, okay. it was mine. It's okay. I knew I shouldn't have pushed it. So eight atmospheres, and rate, that wasn't even rated burst, but it's an old balloon, mm -hmm. so that's probably what happened. But that's kind of good that you saw it just drops really fast if it ruptures. All right, we're going to pretend that that didn't actually happen, and so we're going to deflate it. So you're going to dial down and then pull your negative. Okay. Now, in the real world, if that really had ruptured, you actually might see some blood start coming back because you're actually gonna be pulling from the patient. Um, but here, it was not, we're not gonna see it like that. But that, any, either way, that's how we would go ahead and, and deflate that balloon, okay? You're also gonna call out what was your maximum atmospheres and for how many seconds. So we're gonna say this was 10 for 30 seconds. So go ahead and say it. 10 for 30 seconds. Right, and in, if we were in the lab, loud enough so that they can chart it okay. in the recording system, okay? Now, we're gonna put this down. Doctor's gonna wanna take a quick pick. So, a couple different things. They may leave the balloon in there and ask for a test. They may pull the balloon back just to the ostium of the guide catheter and ask you for a test. Ask, we may take a picture, da 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 whatever they're gonna do. All right, at that point, once we've done that, we can pretend, okay, you took that picture, turn back to pressure. Now it's time to take it out, okay? I'm gonna open, there's really not a lot you have to do at this moment, except for make sure that that just goes. If you're practicing and you're the doctor, this is one of the hardest things at first just to get used to, but think of it like our over the wire system once we get to that point. Right now, all you're gonna do is hold your wire pull your balloon catheter. You're gonna feel resistance. Once that balloon has gotten here where the wire lumen is, now you've gotta walk it out. So you're going to hold your wire, keep it in place, pull the balloon to you. Hold the wire. It's the same thought process we did when we took the AL1 out, when we did the over the wire exchange. Same thing, just on a little smaller scale with these little bit smaller wires. Perfect. You're making sure that nothing's happening. All right, the balloon is out of the body, so the doctor should come back over here, tighten their two-way back down, and grip their wire. At that point, they may say, okay, you can pull it off. Always make sure the doctor has this, though. They don't, and you pull, and you pull that wire back, it's on you, not them. They're gonna just say, it no matter. They should have had a hold of the wire, but they don't, they'll, they'll blame you, I'm just telling you, okay? Go ahead and pull it on off. You can wrap it. Try to, what I'll do a lot of times is go ahead and um, disconnect. Now, if I know that this, we're done, this was our POBA, I'll leave it connected and I'll just, Put on. yeah, throw it on my back table or tuck it under or something. But if I know we're gonna stent, then I will disconnect and then we'll have to get the air out of our inflation device and get ready to connect to our stent that they're gonna pass us off right then and there, okay? All right, we would like for you to come and wipe this wire also. Primarily, again, if we are gonna go ahead and be doing more, putting another balloon or another stent on, then we may need to take some pictures. So we're gonna take some final pictures. All right, we'll say we've taken our pictures. And actually, I don't want to take too many pictures. I have to always go, make myself go backwards. I want to go and take your wire out, our wire, and then I'm going to take our final shot. So I'm just going to kind of pull out. You're going to take it, 
wipe it, wind it. And even though we might not use it again, this is best practice. This is what a lot of most most of us are going to do. And I'll tuck it up underneath here, usually. All right? I might add, we're going to get our manifold back in our hand, get ready to take those pictures. We take our pictures. If we're done, we're done. Okay? Now, to get our guide catheter out, it depends on the physician. So I'm gonna just say, Nicole, if it's radial, they're gonna ask you for your, the 035 wire back. So let's go ahead and get the 035 and let's just practice with it. Some doctors in the femoral will just pull the catheter straight out, okay? But some, depending on the shape of the tip, they may ask for the 035 wire back so that they can put it in, straighten the tip, and then they'll just pull everything out as a unit. And you can see how I had that come out to just straighten that tip. And that's our interventional procedure. Now, at the end, depending on what we've done, if it's radial, we're going to not worry about an ACT for the most part. We're gonna take and use a TR band and pull that sheath out, do what we have to do with the TR band, and send the patient out of the room. If it's femoral, like it, this one is, we're going to probably pull an ACT, okay? When we pull an ACT, now I've been, this mannequin has been causing me to suck a lot of air, so we'll see what happens. What you should do is pull a waist. So remember, anytime we're sampling blood, we want to, I, I think that there's something wrong with this sheath. I don't know why it's sucking air, but I should be sucking blood back and I would be going ahead and getting 10 cc's of waste. Get my little syringe, whatever syringe they want you to use for the ACT, it doesn't take a lot of blood, usually we use a three. Pull back my sample for my ACT, pass it off to whoever's gonna run the ACT in the machine. Then I'm gonna take a clean flush syringe, we'll just use this one. Of course, draw back to make sure there's no air. My air rose, we're gonna pretend like that's all blood in there, and then I'm gonna flush forward. Okay? Depending if we're gonna use a closure device, then we would do our closure device, however we do the closure devices. If we're leaving it in the patient's body, we gotta secure it. I've already mentioned, some places, they will have you suture it to the patient's skin with a little stitch. Some places we'll just have you put some four by fours and a large tegaderm, which is a see-through bandage, to keep it secure until it's time to pull the sheath out, until that anticoagulant medicine has worn off of the patient. Okay? Some places they actually have, it's called an obturator, and it's similar to the dilator, except for it's solid and it's blunt on the tip and they'll have you put that in the center. What that does is it keeps less lumen for the clot, for a clot to form there, okay?